All right, so um, that was the original topic of my of my lecture, but because uh, it's really amazing, and I thought that it, that will be continuation of my of my talk from um, the second uh, meeting. Uh, but yeah, because due to synchronousness, I just cross it out, and I will just give you a brief uh, uh, notes about the USV repository, what we are doing right now, and what we have to do, and I hope we will do at the discussion meeting uh, this evening, because this is really important. Uh, before we will start, you know, purchasing software or uh, configuring software, we have to know what we want to do. Uh, if if we have no aim, then doesn't matter what path we will choose. All right, so uh, yeah, that, the main topic was about uh, this pipeline, and I thought I will um, focus not on software like two years ago, but rather about the steps that you have to take to obtain a good uh, uh, data. Uh, the, uh, my spreadsheet that was quite uh, a lot of questions about, uh, it was a comparison of, of software, and I promise it will be updated, and uh, I will just probably publish the, the talk as a as a short uh, open article. But uh, I finish my last talk with uh, this uh, uh, rendering. It's just a rendering of the of the building, and this is what how it looks like from yesterday. So it's uh, it's it's really like almost almost done. Uh, there are windows, doors, and uh, everything inside. So something that was uh, just a dream, like three years ago, right now, we can just knock on it and it's, it's real. Uh, and that, that will be our uh, small data center. Uh, and so uh, my thought was that it exactly will be a site for USB repository. So what we'll have inside, uh, we are able to... Uh, purchase not that much in case of hardware because there will be uh, just as I remember eight uh, NVIDIA a 100 tensor GPU cores that are really good for uh, machine learning, regular CPUs and uh, free um, different type of storage but we design it to be very flexible so for example if you will have like a huge project and we can apply for example for real repository then with a low cost we can just add the storage to the to the system and the system will be storage and computing so you can do all the stuff inside and uh, uh, yeah that this that's the equipment already purchased ready to go they just finishing the uh installation inside and they are removing temporary uh, plumbing because uh, <laughs> it was funny because when i came like uh Half year ago, there were a pipe from the toilet right, exactly <laughs> at the top of the of the place where the computer should be. So we said, no, 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 no. And they said, it's just temporary. Yeah. Yeah. And we still, okay, okay. I, I, I just got this, you know, notion, what can go wrong? <laughs> so it's already purchased and uh, I hope before the end of the year, uh, it, will be, it will be running. But what we have to think, and this is really uh, the topic for our discussion. And Kuba prepared already like a 10 pages of uh, some guidelines so we can think about this. And the main question is, do we have to think about those steps? Because uh, usually when we thought about the database, it's that we are really cleaning our data. Uh, what we put, we put already processed data in the, in the data warehouse. And then we just link, for example, to raw or processed files, okay? Which is the traditional way. Exactly the same as we do on our uh, computers. We have a Excel and or, or something else, and then we have a files. And, but we can apply a more modern techniques, which is called a data lake, um, that you just put a raw data plus how you can obtain the uh, end results. So it's like on this uh, data center, we don't we, we want to keep our raw data as raw as possible. The question is, what raw is a good raw uh, data? And all procedures that you can end up with, uh, for example, classification, uh, pictures, or statistics. Uh, because then, if you want to change some parameters, you don't have to go back and to your own data and upload it once again. It's all done in this uh, data lake. 
The only problem with data lakes is that they sometimes become data swamp. Uh, that's why we really need to know before what we want to put there. So there are a lot of questions. Oh, Come on. Okay, so we will have to assess how much space do we need, how fast the space should be, and especially the uh, type of access. Do we uh, want to share our data or share with some people or just keep it private? Uh, we have to think about data format. And even with data lake, where we can put any digital data like videos, uh, physiology, so on, we should be able to read our data between the labs. Okay, so we have to think about the audio format that should be uh, as raw as possible, but uh, at least compressed a little bit. Uh, and uh, then we have to uh, figure out about the metadata descriptions. So, so what to attach to those data, like time series. Uh, the ways to synchronize them. For example, if you have many uh, microphones, this should be a separate four files or one single file with four channels. I think separate will be much better. And uh, then we have to decide what kind of uh, uh, technology we want to use uh, for processing, what language and uh, how we will just write down the whole pipelines. So starting from the raw data, ending with, a, uh, with endpoints. So we have to define the endpoints. All right. So that was really uh, brief, and I hope uh, that will, you know, increase your uh, appetite for doing so and working and discussion.